Hello and welcome to another very spe- special episode of the Sales Ops Demystified podcast. We are joined by Ella Pebbles, who is currently running revenue operations at Aircore. Ella, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to be here. Um, so I want to kick off by first understanding how you initially moved into the world of sales slash revenue operations. Um, I sort of fell into it. I graduated with math ops, stats, everything, and so I was very financially uh, focused. And then yeah. I've rolled into, because I think oftentimes when you come into uh, ops, it's just very much a financially driven role. And my analytical background, et cetera, it, I fell into my lap. Got it. So were you like, you got the, you went to college and then you were like looking at roles and then you're like, oh, I could be good at this thing. Uh, no, I had, I had like analyst roles in finance actually beforehand and then had sort of dug a little deeper in like the analytics and BI side and somebody in operations somewhere decided like that looked like a good profile for operation for sales operations. And then I got scouted. I moved to San Francisco and Mm -hmm. you know, that was the end of it. Awesome. And then looking at air call at the moment, how many reps at or so both sales and CS are you currently kind of operating? Uh, so it's a global global org, and we have about ten here, and I would say maybe another fifteen over in EMEA, supporting like five different regions. Um, so, so that's that's the reps, or that's the ops team. That's the reps. The reps, cool. So ten over here, and then five in EMEA. Mm-hmm. And how many of you are there to support these people? One and a half. I just got Amazing. my Amazing. Uh, to ramp through so but i've been cannibalizing folks from all over the org to do my yeah. bidding <laughs> yeah that's how it works right you have to like work the politics to influence people to help you um so you, you have your first half person yes uh, uh, what, he's a full person he's a wonderful full person but he's just <laughs> so I, I i don't like to tell people that we're two because i presume that that means that they think that they the workload will be doubled and I don't want him to get the mm. same uh, oftentimes off sort of like nightmare to be mired and everything sort of right from the beginning where you don't actually get to ramp well and so you're just always sort of trying to catch up and it just never really works out for you interesting so you're you're marketing him to the rest of the business as half a person to allow him to uh, like ramp properly and be more strategic and not just get thrown loads of stuff exactly and he will be a whole person and he has is- He's, a, he's officially achieved like full RAM status in my mind, but don't tell anybody. Okay, so we should hopefully release this. Uh, okay, well, maybe we can push back the release of this. <laughs> um, and, and what's his job title? His job title is Sales Operations Analyst. Got it. Cool. Awesome. Should we give him a quick shout out? What shout out? What's his name? Justin Lee, and he's wonderful. Shout out to Justin. Um, okay, cool. And the current sales tech stack you guys are operating? We have Salesforce, which is the bread and butter of operations and always, not always will be. And maybe I, I, I please note this was not sold or paid for by Salesforce. Um, Salesforce, we use uh, Outreach, or sorry, we use SalesLoft and um, MixMax for like email cadences. And we got rid of Pardot and moved into Marketo for marketing, drip campaigns, nurture, et cetera. Um, we obviously have Sales Navigator for prospecting. Zoom Info is like an extra like top button on that. And a special shout out to a tool called Chili Piper, which unfortunately, it's an unfortunate name and I, I'm not always happy. We always call it CP over here. Um, but it's a calendaring and routing tool. So we sit it on the back of our, our forms and it really very simply, seamlessly, after obviously a very complex build, um, because of us, not because of them, uh, routes pretty much every lead based on what they filled out in the form based on our sort of criteria in the back end. And they're really, really fantastic. Um, yeah, we had, we had Scott from Chip Piper on a couple of weeks ago. And yeah, I hear a lot of people using that tool. How, um, so what were you doing previous to having that in place? 
there was apex code built with a very rudimentary like one two or three equals rep one rep two rep three and if you see a one in this round robin number then you associate it with rep one it was it was kludgy and clearly the reason why we no longer have it because when i came in i saw it was like that's not going to work for us so got it awesome um and can you talk about a time like recently where you have done something that's made these reps perform better or be more productive? Yeah, I think um, something that I always really like to do for the managers to sort of help facilitate their like one-on-ones and facilitate their conversations to enable these team members to really like sell well is like a very simple report which just shows like what their quota is what their average deal size is their qualification rate their win rate and then what that means in number of ops that they need to have in order to close for this month period and so as a manager you can see oh your deal size in comparison to everybody else is a little bit low but hey your win rates are great so like we know you can win it but like maybe you're discounting a little bit too much maybe maybe we should sort of like see if we can we can increase the number of users look into your gong that's another tool that we use uh, recording to see sort of where we're sort of missing the mark but we already get that insight just at day one because you have that comparison metric and you have oh no we need to really really give this guy like 300 ops and obviously like that's not going to work so figure out where like those insights can be found so that's kind of the first thing that i do from day one God, have you considered doing sales management? Because the, the way you were giving me feedback there kind of felt really effective. <laughs> um, but can I just clarify that? So you give, you would build each manager this simple report. So every month when they sit down with their rep, you can immediately see how they're doing to quota and the, the metrics they can tweak. Exactly. Yeah, that's nice. I bet the managers really like that. Um, cool. So, and you said that's the first thing you do as in when you join a business, if they don't have that in place, you'll just set that up right away. Of course. God, yeah, but the managers, managers are super happy because either like who would be doing that previously? I guess the managers would have to do that or it just wouldn't be done. It wouldn't be done. And I think oftentimes it's really, really hard. My sort of story behind the job, behind revenue operations, behind operations is sales leaders and CS leaders are visionaries. They're charismatic. They work hard. They just have these great visionary future, future dated like sort of things. And I liken our teams or operations as the voice behind the throne. So we're in the back sort of whispering, oh, no, 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 we can't do that because X, Y, Z, or yes, we can absolutely do that. Here's what's a feasible time frame, And like, here are sort of some of the caveats that we need to make sure we're aware of before we start making these like broad topic like we're gonna like move forward etc so i really like that that sort of story to tell because i really do think it really exposes sort of what we are to the org as a whole like we're project managers but we're there to sort of like it's not a reality check because reality check kind of has like a negative connotation it's more like like I don't know, like a, a paradise check, right? Like, which is like, we can be paradise, but how do we get there with what we have today? And how can we move towards there in a really like thoughtful, insightful manner? Cool. I like that. I like the, the, the four words, the voice behind the throne. I think that's what we, we pick out a quote for each episode. And I think we'll, that's what we'll pick. Um, cool. And now I want to talk about the relationships with the reps. Do you have... Do you have like a direct one-on-one relationship with all 15? Like, are you able to, when you need something to be done, do you like, how how do you manage that? How, How do you get them to do something that maybe they didn't want to do? I think it's really honestly, it's twofold. One fold, which is the first fold is, is that Aircall is a really good uh, company for culture. And everybody here just like tries very, very hard. And they're all sort of like ready to help and ready to be there and are willing to listen to reason. And if you can think about the person that you're, you're uh, sort of speaking to and understand like where they're coming from, what they need and like what's driving them, like you can tailor your conversation to how do I get what's in here and into there in a meaningful way. And so, and I'm pointing to your head for, I don't know if this is going to be visual or not. Um, 
And so I do have a personal, re- personal like one-on-one sort of relationship with each of the reps. So like I need something from Johan. I, I send him a quick slack. I, you know, need these guys to like really like pump up on something or stop doing this one thing. Like it's a quick slack to the like one or two or four just as needed. And I think that we've built that relationship of they fear me a little bit, which is always important, um, <laughs> but they also really respect me. And I think that that's because like I can actually speak to speak to them in a way that like makes it very very simple why do they fear you um i think I'm that's a trick question i think it is it i mean i honestly i think that i think it's more i think that uh especially as ops i do have that typical type a very like analytical logical sort of mm. re- response and i think very quickly on my feet and so you come with with a response and I've got one like ready at the ready to support my cause to some extent and in a manner that like like you're just like whoa (laughs) and it's not whoa because like oh wow that was too much it's like I cannot get anything past you and that worries me a little bit so got it um the forecasting process are you involved and what happens yeah, so forecasting, we use Salesforce forecasting uh, a bit to sort of help us get to where we need to be. The problem, there are some limitations with that, but one of the best parts about Salesforce forecasting is that the reps and their managers can have a one-on-one. That manager can then edit that number. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking as if you know what I'm talking about, so let me know if you don't and I can... Yeah, 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 yeah I've got this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the fact that 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 capacity for editing exists sort of helps it so that we are high velocity, we move very quickly, our sales cycle is like relatively low. And so that true sales stages sort of maybe they're in evaluating, but in reality, they've sort of started negotiations, but they haven't achieved the exit criteria to move beyond evaluating. Well, like I know that this is going to close this month and I can beef up this number. So we have a true value of what we've closed, what we really truly anticipate closing and move forward. And then each manager can then speak to that in a meeting like weekly or bi-weekly with the E-team. Got it. So, well, what you're saying is that you, you might have a rigid forecast process, but actually if a rep is meeting with a, with a manager, they can go in and edit and tweak like based on what's actually happening. Exactly. Exactly. Cool. And then are you then taking that forecast and presenting it to the, the CRO or head of sales? Yeah, it's the it's essentially like an E team conversation, right? Like we get everybody who's sort of heading these different revenue departments in a room, and in that manner, we can have a good frank conversation. And when something happens, like somebody says to the effect, like, "Oh, uh, maybe like I'm not able to hit my number because X, Y, Z," the other person's in the room, so it's much more of a, I think, like it's more of a dialogue than a like like finger pointing exercise, which is not the case anywhere ever, she says funnily. Um, But it does, I think, help us all get a better understanding of where we're at, where the failure points are, how we can fix them and move forward. And obviously I'm there sort of, again, sort of as like to facilitate the meeting. I'm going to be quiet and listen and watch and make sure that like anything that needs to be done, we can take notes on and like, like take it outside and have a, have a sort of follow up meeting to then, uh, figure out the solutions on these problems, et cetera. And is that just in that meeting, is that just the revenue leaders or is it also the reps as well? Revenue leaders only. Got it. Okay. And then the next question is if you could only measure one sales metric for the rest of your career, which would you choose? Oh no. <laughs> um, I, I'm stumped. I don't think I, like data is such a foundational part. Like I would, I would stop measuring anything. Like if I can't measure, there's so many, there's nothing. The thing about data is that it's, it's more about like it help, it's there to help provide insights. If you come into the data expecting an answer, the numbers will give you that answer. So they're very, very, very important and not no one number will tell you what you need at any point in time ever. So I don't have an answer for that. Um, oh, and I think, strong. <laughs> yeah. Do you see the fear? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm scared. Um, no one got that. Okay, here, I'm going to answer it a slightly different way. Which metric do you most enjoy measuring? Um, 
I think honestly, I really like the positive notes of things, right? So win rates, right? I think the 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 best part of like what we can do as operations is help to like facilitate the business becoming more successful. And that's about how we win, period. Got it. Nice. And then final question is who has in your sales ops and revenue ops career, who has inspired you the most? Um, I would say my old CFO at Marin Software was probably the most inspiring, bar none. And what was his name? Brad Kanish. Brad Kanish, old CFO. And so were you, you, you were in sales ops in that role, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And so you, I guess you were working with him and he was helping you. Why? Cool. That's the first time we've had a CFO or anyone in finance as like the inspiration. It's normally either the CFO, sales leader or sales ops leader. So that is interesting. Um, awesome. Well, Ella, here are the things that I picked out from the discussion. Your answer to the metric question, we haven't had that before. Or maybe we had that once or something similar to that once, but normally we actually get one. So I think that, and I do agree with what you're saying about the data piece. Um, the simple report that you create for the sales managers must be like an absolute godsend for them when they see that because their sales meetings must be so simple like if they have the data on the wall um and then that's it that's the two thank you so much for your time ella that was awesome um anything else you want to share with the audience no i appreciate you having me here thank you thank you